Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. This is the State of the County, and it is the last of our three-part series in our State Ofs for 2021. Today, we have with us Chair Aileen McNabb Coleman from the Cuga County Legislature. Legislature. Um, and I just want to welcome her and thank you, Aileen, for being here and welcome to all of you. And thank you for taking time out of your day to hear about what's going on with the county. I would also like to thank our sponsors for these events, um, Tompkins Trust Company, two plus four, and our diamond member, Lions National Bank. And with that, I am going to hand it over to Aileen McNabb-Coleman to get started. Thank you, Tracy. Good morning, everyone. As um, Tracy mentioned, my name is Aileen McNabb-Coleman. I'm sorry you can't see me. Uh, we've been working with IT to try to, to get this uh, up and running and to do a side-by-side -side configuration that did not work. So uh, you're here to see the presentation, not exactly my face. So <laughs> we're gonna move forward with that. Um, so as Tracy mentioned, I'm uh, chair of uh, the Cuga County Legislature. I'm so pleased to present the state of the county for the second time. Uh, last August, I had the opportunity to share the state of the county with you. And wow, what a stretch of time eight months has been since the last time I spoke with you. Um, I would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for ho hosting the state of our schools, the state of the city, and now the state of the county. So I'd like to introduce you to our 15 member legislature here in Cuga County. Many months ago, legislator Charlie Ripley from District 9 left the legislature to, legislature to resume supervisor in the town of Summerhill. And that late left a vacancy actually District 7. Um, so legislator Mark Strong, who unfortunately is not pictured here today, uh, was voted in as his replacement in January, 2021. Leading the county through this perilous time has been quite an experience. Uh, as a legislature, we began 2020 with ambitious in initiatives. Our world stopped a year ago due to the rolling wave of the coronavirus through New York State and our nation. I was here at the county office building on the sixth floor, um, a building that was normally teeming with work uh, that was mostly emptied out. Cuga County staff navigated working remotely and balancing their own health and well being with work and family. As an employer, the county faced uncertainty during furloughs of county staff. And then we faced an alarming number of cases for months, representing the spread to every corner of the county, all the while maintaining the 24 seven operations of services that benefit our most vulnerable population, including uh, meeting the needs of children in our community through child protective services, through meeting the needs of adult protective services, and um, providing mental health assistance. Um, and while uh, meeting the needs of our community, uh, we simultaneously supported the Cuba County Health Department and our community partners such as Auburn Community Hospital through the darkest days of this pandemic. Since I last uh, spoke with you in August, we have taken on and, and hired three um, new department heads at the county. We have uh, Kelly King, our Director of Employment and Training. Uh, she was an internal hire um, and is doing a fantastic job there. We have Brian Soper, our Highway Superintendent. As you can see in the picture above, um, it's a little small, but there's me <laughs> as I served as Interim Highway Superintendent for a number of months. Um, I got to know uh, all the ins and outs of our Highway Department here at the county. That was a, an amazing experience. Um, to really understand uh, what happened. So uh, I got fortunately, I guess we'll say fortunately, that did only last a number of months and uh, we were able to put um, Brian Soap, excuse me, Brian Soap, our highway superintendent in place. Um, he came to us um, from Fairhaven. And then uh, our emergency management office uh, has a new director, Dale Courier. He came to us in September as an interim director and he was just voted um, to carry on as director of our emergency management uh, department. So we are very pleased um, and excited to be working with these new members of our county. Our 2021 budget uh, amounted to just over $152 million. Um, we had a lot of challenges during the creation of this budget. We were seeing a 5% increase in health insurance. We had reduced sales tax collections. 
by uh, which decreased decreased our budget by at least four hundred thousand. Um, we saw salary increases for both union and non-union employees. And at the time of the development, state aid potential reductions um, were was we were looking at a potential 20% loss of funding, which amounted to about $4 million. So there was a lot of uncertainty uh, going into this budget cycle. Um, despite that, we were able to limit property tax increase to only 1.9%. That uh, put us well below the tax cap, which was estimated at about 5.7%. We're continuing to manage fund balances per county fund balance policy. We're using reserves for intended purposes. And we we have voted on strategic investments in our county operation. Uh, we brought on some new staff at the health department. We're looking at county administration and leadership help. Uh, currently, there is no administrator here in the county. I've been acting administrator uh, for the second year in a row. We're looking at, um, we have uh, funded in our budget an operations officer to oversee the operations of the county um, and also an executive assistant for the sixth floor. And then we're also looking at um, including in this year, uh, a new IT professional that will be a county um, department head. So you may have heard the uh, wonderful news, uh, Kiwi County is set to receive approximately $14.8 million from the federal government. Uh, that equates to 50% this year and 50% next year. We're waiting on the Treasury Department to issue further regulations. What we do know is that there are four areas in which this money is intended to be used initially. Um, offset revenue losses due to COVID pandemic, uh, water and sewer, and broadband infrastructure, infrastructure upgrades, cover the cost of essential workers and other COVID-related expen expenditures, and address overall negative economic impacts of COVID in our local economy. So while we're not sitting on a firm plan for this money uh, today, uh, we need to see the regulations before making any commitments. The goal is to stimulate the economy and fund sustainable initiatives in our county. I've identified a working group comprised of various county representation and local and regional economic development leadership. While this process um, of utilizing once in a lifetime additional funding to the county needs to be swiftly acted on, it will take a thoughtful, inclusive approach as I'm committed to utilizing these funds to support long-term resident-centered projects. So much of our year has been uh, clearly focused on our COVID response here in the county. Um, clearly the response overall has been county-driven across the state. Um, and so our Kew County Health Department has played the, uh, the focal role in uh, response to this pandemic as well as what we're now considering um, a planning for a recovery phase. In August, after I you know, met with you, we felt like the numbers were concerning, but they were manageable. Um, at that time, securing PPE and testing supplies ruled the day for the county and our partners. From last spring until the fall, together with the Auburn Community Hospital, our health department embarked on a testing strategy with drive-through testing at various sites, including the Old County Nursing Home, Kew County Highway Department, Kewga Onondaga Boces, Kew Community College, and the Auburn Community Hospital. As you can imagine, each one of these locations required a lot of um, logistics and planning uh, and, and a lot of partnerships. So we we definitely um, work together as a team in a collaborative manner to get that accomplished. In November, I approached Kiwi County Emergency Management for additional testing uh, seen above at the Emerson Park Pavilion. Little did we know the numbers of positive COVID cases would climb to a virtually unmanageable level where the state came to our aid uh, to help with contact tracing and staffing for our testing clinics. And that happened around Thanksgiving. We, 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 this pandemic had shortly outgrown uh, our capabilities here in our county. So at that time, they were working on um, color designations. Um, we were just at the end of that strategy for the, for the state. So they were offering us um, resources without designating us a color zone at that time. So we were able to, to get the help that we needed from the state in that way. 
confirmed cases since March 18, 2020, so in the past year, there's been 5,494 COVID-19 cases in the county. There have been a total of 89 COVID-related COVID county deaths um, in the past year, which is staggering. Uh, COVID-19 asymptomatic testing will continue through our emergency management office through April 15th at Emerson Park. Then it will transition to the Finger Lakes Mall. Uh, there's a clinic area uh, behind the mall that we are currently using as our vaccination site uh, that will also be housing asymptomatic testing. So that will be moved so that the, um, the, the pavilion can begin to plan for their events. Testing for symptomatic people continues to be available at some physician practices, hospital operated urgent care centers and our regional testing center in Syracuse. So here's a picture of our in-person, uh, our one in-person meeting as a regional control group here. Um, we, we met daily, sometimes several times a day, um, if not several times a week over the course of the past year. Cayuga, Oswego, Onondaga, Madison, and Cortland County leaders served as members of the regional control group. All facets of our lives were touched by the shutdown, from religious gatherings to recreational sports, to restaurants, to grocery markets, schools, and living rooms were all impacted by guidance from the state. Central New York control group spoke daily, and our calls include state leaders, regional economic leaders, and labor leaders. Each of us advocated specifically for our region and for our county. We examined local COVID positive trends, advocated and even shared testing supplies, uh, united with one voice for movement on guidance restrictions based on our own regional needs in central New York, not downstate needs. And this advocacy continues today as we've moved to vaccines and potential recovery. So as you can see from this illustration, uh, I, I wanted to include this one today that um, you can see the impact overall uh, on the county as well as the city um, and that, you know, no one was untouched by this. Um, there were a lot of uh, uh, interpretations early on about where were hot spots and how can we stay safe and if we just stayed in this part of the county, we're okay, we don't have to worry about it. Um, and of course, all that was eradicated when the spread, you know, was fully um, on and the surge really came. So to me, that's a really staggering picture to see what has transpired. Now we have moved to, um, you know, in addition to continued testing, of course, you know, COVID is still poses a risk. We have definitely moved into the vaccine phase and this has um, been a, a tremendous uh, turn of events uh, as this, the vaccines became available. Um, advocating to get the vaccines to our county has definitely been a full-time job. Um, and, you know, we saw that hard struggle in the beginning and uh, things have gotten better as more vaccine has become available uh, across the nation. So the Kewa County Health Department began vaccinating uh, our residents in January, 2021. Vaccination sites included Kewa County uh, Cuga Onondaga Boses, Port Byron High School, Southern Cuga High School. Uh, all of those were great cooperatives. We performed various mobile clinics at senior uh, citizen housing sites around the county. We enlisted the help of EMTs, retired nurses, retired doctors. Um, of course, the, our great partner in this uh, effort has been the City of Auburn and uh, the Auburn Fire Department. They have played a major role in helping to get these vaccinations out. Uh, it's very important to our county that we were able to vaccinate people uh, in place and meet people where they are. And, and we know we had vulnerable populations with our seniors and we also have transportation needs. Um, so we were happy that uh, we advocated very heavily for a, a plan to be accepted by the state in order to make this possible. So this has uh, worked to our advantage. We're operating clinics currently at the Finger Lakes Mall Event Center. Um, by close of business, 331, we will have provided over 10,300 doses of vaccine to our community. That is specifically by the health department. And as you can see from this graphic from the state, 
the 12,000 uh, with completed vaccine series meant folks were able to access um, different uh, methods of getting the vaccine, be it through their um, pharmacy or uh, other, I guess, um, providers for the vaccine. Partnership for vaccine registration um, came with the towns, villages, and the city providing a phone number for residents to call and offer assistance with registration for many people with limited ability or access to the internet. Um, this has been a tremendous success. We were able to call on our towns and villages. We, Kathleen Cuddy and I had a, uh, a meeting, a Zoom meeting with everyone. And we said, you know, we need your help. You know where the vulnerable population is in your community. You know their names, you know their children's names, <laughs> you know where they live, you know if they haven't been out of the house, you know, in a, in, in a number of months. Um, we need you to find these folks first and, and get and get them the information they need to help them register. So um, when I first came into uh, developing the, the slides for today, I had a slide for vaccine strategy. Well, you know, we have moved very swiftly for, for eligibility criteria over the course of a couple of weeks. So this has been fantastic news. So I know that um, beginning next week, people 16 years and older can be eligible to provide, to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. And that has been tremendous change. Um, in this, you know, we have been fighting all along for our um, industry, uh, manufacturing industry workers to get vaccinated, our DBW to be vaccinated, and it was a, it's been a real struggle. And you know, as the vaccine has opened up, so has uh, the eligibility. So we are so pleased with this. I mentioned before transport transportation issues. Um, surely, the consistency and the predictability of the influx of vaccine is helping us plan. Uh, for more shots and arm shots and arms on a steady basis, our newest partner has been the Finger Lakes Mall, and then that clinic has been going very well. We're utilizing um, their space also, as I said before, for the testing clinics and transportation services like Centro, Scat Van, Community Action Program are all helping with transportation where needed. Uh, I believe it was June, uh, 2020 after seeing all the unrest that we had all been going through um, post um, the demise and the, and the, the, um, the loss of George Floyd, we had um, some unrest in our, all of our communities across the nation. With that, the governor um, put out an, exec, an executive order 203 called uh, Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative. Uh, certainly June, um, you know, we were, we were given this executive order with the deadline of April 1st for completion. And we had to learn to, um, you know, work alongside the COVID crisis in order to, to be able to advance other initiatives. This one particularly rose to the surface as, as we had a lot to, to work on with this. So over the past several months, Q County officials have partnered with our community to conduct an assessment and review of police services provided by the Auburn City Police Department and the Q County Sheriff's Office. The effort was initiated to improve law enforcement services provided by both agencies in order to comply with Executive Order 203. I was very proud to participate in this collaborative with the City of Auburn, the Police Chief Sean Butler, our Q County Sheriff Brian Skank, stakeholders from multiple agencies and community groups. I wanna thank them for the robust survey feedback um, and thank the public for their robust sur survey feedback. Our county sheriff and city police, police has, have always had a close partnership. However, they strengthened that connection in 2020 and utilized synergistic connecting bridges approach to discussions on how to effectively respond to social and racial inequities with regard to policing in our community. Having the ability to build on that established collaboration provided a strong foundation to achieving the mission of the Executive Order 203 for ongoing discussion, assessment, and accountability into the future. As a result of stakeholder groups, public sessions, and public engagement through surveys, the Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Draft Plan was uploaded to the county website for public comment for two weeks. 
um, and was voted on the legislature on last Tuesday, March 23rd, and the plan has been sent to Albany. In this reform plan, um, specific to Cuga County, our sheriff and the legislature is committed to quarterly reports to the ledge that have to do with uh, reflection on the plan and, and uh, plans for moving forward with the initiatives. Um, those initiatives also include an annual community survey, an annual community meeting. Um, we're looking at opportunities to expand the mental health mobile crisis team. We specifically have needs through the overnight hours and that has posed a, a very um, a strong need in our community. We're also talking about budgeting for body worn cameras uh, for our, our police force and uh, the sheriff is in favor of this. And of course that will take lots of planning and policy um, making around that, uh, around having body worn cameras in our police force. And they um, have plans to update and post publicly all policies related to their department. So this has been uh, a great undertaking um, and uh, I look forward to continued um, discussion on this and accountability as we move forward. So to, I wanna also update you on some other initiatives that have been happening in the county. Owasco Lake Watershed Rules and Regulations. Um, I would like to provide you an update today on those. Um, this has been a very long process Kew County Department of Planning and Economic Development has taken the lead to update the Owasco Lake Watershed Rules and Regulations. The project goal is to update and revise the 1984 Owasco Lake uh, Watershed Rules and Regulations through a thoughtful and engaged public participation um, re process resulting in effective and equitable watershed regulations that will help improve, protect, and preserve water quality within the Owasco Lake Watershed, um, which is 205 square miles. The project initi initiated, excuse me, in the spring of 2017 and following numerous public and stakeholder meetings and including approximate three month public comment period in 2019, reached an important milestone, presentation of the final draft watershed rules and regulations to the Auburn City Council and Owasco Town Board on October 29, 2020. The joint meeting was scheduled to allow the respective boards to consider support for the adoption of, of the updated watershed rules and regulations for Owasco Lake. Both the Auburn City Council and Owasco Town Board supported the adoption of the final draft of the watershed rules reg regulations. The draft and support uh, resolutions were transmitted to New York State Department of Health Bureau of Public Water Supply Protection early this year, initiating the required state review process. This has been a very lengthy process. It has involved a lot of uh, public engagement. Uh, and so we're very pleased to be at this point. So related to this, Kew County received a grant to incorporate the Environmental Protection Agency's nine elements plan into the Wasco Lake Watershed Management and Waterfront Revitalization Plan. This will help us improve the water quality within the Wasco Lake Watershed. Nine element plans identify and quantify sources of pollutants, determine the water quality goals or targets and the pollutant reductions needed to meet the goal and describe the actions needed to achieve the reductions that will improve water quality. This plan will be completed by August of 2021. Cuga County has received two New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation's Green Initiative Grant uh, program grants for the Owasco Flat Wetland Restoration and Riparian Buffers Initiative. This project is located on the City of Auburn owned land off New York Route 38 in the town of Moravia. The Owasco Inlet is being reconnected with its floodplain with water control structures so that during high flow events, water will flow into created and existing wetlands to filter out nutrients and sediment. Riparian buffers will also be added along drainage ways and the Owasco Inlet to further reduce uh, nutrients and sediment inputs. Overall, the project will reduce phosphorus and sediment that reaches Owasco Lake while improving habitat for invertebrates, reptiles, amphibians, and birds. Phase one built two basins in 2019. Phase two built a third basin in 2020 and final construction will be completed this spring. This has been a very long process. Um, our environmental engineer, Bruce Natalie, who has retired, 
Um, uh, we were very happy he could find he could see this project through. I think he said he spent at least 10 years on getting this these grants in place to get this accomplished. So we're very proud of his efforts and seeing this to fruition. Another exciting development in our county um, is the Sterling Nature Center um, and improvements up at the park. I don't know if you've been up to the Sterling Nature Center. I know they have um, seen quite an increase in visitors over COVID. It is a stunningly beautiful place to go and visit. So I recommend that to everyone listening today. So this spring, the Sterling Nature Center will be starting construction of a new interpretive building, parking lot and trail improvements. These improvements build off the Sterling Nature Center functional management plan, which was uh, developed in 2016, and the Sterling Nature uh, Center conceptual design, which was developed in 2019. Funding is being provided by multiple sources. The Governor's Resiliency and Economic Development Initiative, or the Ready Money, uh, which, which was over almost $4 million, and an EPF grant administered by, administered by New York State Office of Parks and Recreation and Historic Preservation to the amount of $230,000, and matching funds from the Sterling Nature Center Reserve Account and Economic Development Account. These funding opportunities allow the county to transform the Sterling Nature Center into a modern, resilient, and environmentally responsible and educational and recreational amenity. The project is anticipated to be completed in late spring 2022. We're very excited about this project. Another project that we have been working on for the past few years um, is Emerson Park and Doville Island upgrades. Um, this is particularly um, close to my heart, it's in my district, um, and, and I've had a lot of um, work on this project uh, personally and myself, so I'm very excited to see this coming, um, coming online. With phase one construction of pathways and pedestrian bridge on Doville Island complete, Q County Department of Planning and Envi Economic Development, excuse me, is working with phase one landscape architects, Trowbridge Wolf Michaels, to further design the island to be active center of Emerson Park. Scope of design includes a destination playground in the northeast quadrant of the island and open air concert venue for the southwest quadrant. Dan Smalls presents a concert promoter out of Ithaca has also been retained as a sub consultant to provide expertise on the design and functionality of the concert venue. This project is the first step in implementing the Emerson Park programming plan developed by Biederman Redevelopment Ventures in December 2019. The plan lays out a roadmap to activate Doville Island and increase park visitation and generate re revenue through concerts, events, and other programming initiatives. The project is expected to be completed this spring, so we are really excited to be at this stage um, to see the uh, developments and enhancements of this uh, beautiful park and has always been beautiful, but now we will have, you know, a great opportunity for um, programming and gathering here at the park. In partnership with the Town of Brutus, Kiwi County Development Planning and Economic Development received a $418,000 planning grant from New York State Environmental Protective Protection Fund in 2019 to explore the possibility of rewatering the enlarged Erie Canal between Shazel Park in the village of Port Byron and Aqueduct Park in the town of Brutus to allow for recreational activities on it, such as non-motorized boating and fishing and two design trail enhancements between both parks. Bergman Associates, an engineering firm based out of Rochester was selected as a consultant for the project. The project is designed in two phases. Phase one is a flood study to investigate whether the nearly two mile section of the enlarged Erie Canal can be rewatered without causing any negative flooding impacts. This phase is, near, is nearing completion and the final flood study report will be submitted this spring. The results of phase one are positive. I'm sorry, if the results of phase one are positive uh, without negative flooding impacts, phase two can proceed. Phase two is twofold, design and engineering of recommended rewatering solution and the design enhanced trails uh, with amenities between both parks. The results of phase two will produce a shovel ready project. So we're very excited at this initiative as well. Other uh, interesting 
happenings here uh, in our county, local waterfront revitalization program grants for the village of Cuga and the town of Sterling and the village of Fairhaven. Cuga County has received two New York State Department of State local waterfront revitalization grants. Um, these grants are being implemented by the Cuga County Department of Planning and Economic Development. This plan uh, is both a land and water use plan prepared by a, by a community such as well as a strategy to implement the plan. Completing a local waterfront revitalization program can significantly increase a community's ability to attract appropriate development that will take advantage of, but also respect the unique cultural and natural characteristics of its waterfront. Presenting a unified vision for the waterfront also increases the community's chances to obtain public and private funding for waterfront projects. Waterfront advisory committees have been formed for each project. The inventory and analysis section of, for both projects is nearing completion and the communities will begin working on the visioning process for their waterfronts this year, including holding the first public meetings. We're very excited about these two, these areas of improvement in our county. Up next, we have Cuga County uh, Blue Way Trail, Cuga Lake Blue Way Trail. Cuga County Planning worked with Tompkins and Seneca counties and the Cuga Lake Scenic Byway Incorporated under a grant from New York State Development of State, Department of State to develop the Cuga Lake Blue Way Trail project. The Cuga Lake Blue Way Trail opened in 2021. The trail is designed to expand on the ways that visitors and residents can experience the natural, cultural, and historical resources of Cuga Lake area. The public water recreational trail connects non-motorized watercrafts, including kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, and canoes to our treasured natural resource, Cuga Lake. Cuga County Planning, uh, partnering with Ag Agricultural and Farmland Protection Board and the New York State Agricultural Land Trust have utilized farmland protection implementation grants to protect farmland in the county. Since the first project award in 2001, the county through this grant program has permanently protected and conserved a total of 8,575 acres on 16 farms uh, with a total award amount of $15 million. <clears throat> in 2021, the grant program is providing nearly 1.5 million to protect 684 acres of the Kyle Farms located in the town of Ira. So we have um, a couple of solar projects happening in the county we're very excited about. Since January 2020, a small scale solar facility project has been proposed in five municipalities, including Ledyard, Niles, Springport, Union Springs, and Sterling, that would generate a total of 41.5 megawatts of electricity. This amount of electricity could power up to 8,000 homes. Additionally, most municipalities in Cuga County have taken proactive steps to adopt local laws or amend their zoning ordinances in order to regulate the impacts of solar facilities in their communities. So we're very excited with this. So I'd let you know about some of the, um, I guess, of the uh, kind of countywide plans that have been happening. Um, and I will tell you internally, while balancing COVID and our response, uh, we are, as somebody had pointed out, we're learning, we have learned to uh, walk and chew gum at the same time. So we are back to our ambitious initiatives um, that we set out to explore at the beginning of 2020. Um, one of the large issues that we've been um, looking to invest time and uh, thought to uh, is our capital planning here at the county. Not only does that talk about our buildings, it also talks about setting aside um, and financial planning for our for this capital planning. Um, the county office building is uh, definitely uh, has is aged, and we need to uh, think about uh, realistic plans to move forward with this building. So, uh, the new focus of capital planning is what I like to call. Um, the silver lining of the pandemic. Uh, we're looking at a reimagined county government with a focus on our residents and how they receive services, how our county will continue to deliver the highest quality of services, and how county, county government can be more effective and efficient. I formed a capital planning committee that's committed to examining our buildings and services and investigate how we can set the stage for a welcoming, accessible, efficient workspace for the public, as well as our employees, for over the next 60 years. 
We're also taking on other initiatives here in the county. So we're looking at our compensation study. Uh, we're also looking at a finance committee uh, that's investigating a uh, finance department, I should say. Uh, we're also ex looking to explore a form of government. So um, to talk a little bit about the compensation plan, uh, we're assessing internal and external equity and examining the marketability of positions in county government. The short-term Band-Aid approaches to compensation has led to compression issues as well as real marketability concerns here at the county. So we're working to address those and adopt a sustainable, reliable plan for moving forward. Our county treasurer, Jim Orman, and his administration, administrative staff are helping to uh, uh, help. They have worked to establish a working group uh, that involves legislators to investigate the formation of a county finance department to shore up efficiencies and further streamline technology to support a cohesive department. And in the coming weeks, Vice Chair of the Legislature, Chris Petrus, will kick off an approach uh, to establishing a charter form of government. Setting a charter commission and adopting a charter will be in the hands of the voters through a referendum. Steps will be taken to examine which form of government is the most beneficial for our county. Currently, we have an administrative form of county government with an elected chair and appointed administrator. The administrator position has been vacant since June of 2019. And as I mentioned before, I've been serving as active as acting administrator for the past two years. So those are all very ambitious initiatives, but we are committed to seeing these through um, over the course of the next several months. While the county and the city of Auburn, the towns and villages continue to pitch in where possible and lend a hand um, to, to one another, uh, shared services planning allows each ent entity to look strategically uh, at potential solutions and present plans to the state and potentially benefit from the funding. The shared services plan for 2018 was recently approved for payment by New York State. The project for a shared property tax assessment function with the town of Springport was approved for $52,000. This will be split equally between the town of Springport and Cuga County. The project for a new sports and recreation complex between the county and the city was approved for just over $375,000. And the county and our partners are always looking for projects to submit to New York State for shared services. So I've given you an awful lot of what's happening here at the county. Um, I have to say I'm a little encouraged that most of my presentation um, was not about COVID <laughs> because I have been living in a COVID bubble for a, for a very long time. Um, so I'm really happy to, to discuss and share with you a lot of new things that are happening at the county that we are looking to do simultaneously with our response and, and planning for recovery from this pandemic. So this is really an exciting time. I wanna thank the chamber for making this presentation possible. And I wanna thank you for listening today. Uh, the word pride does not fully encompass my feelings toward the employees of Cuga County. Their dedication to this county and its residents cannot be overstated. I witnessed so many examples over the past year of sheer commitment to provide the highest level of services to our community despite this pandemic. I've also witnessed a lot of compassion for one another here in the county. So we're lucky to have uh, our employees in this workforce. Um, I also I have to also say I have a special place in my heart for every single community member uh, who is an essential worker or first responder or who worked with the public in any capacity over the past year and for the employees who work behind the scenes to ensure that residents' needs are met. Thank you to our local businesses for your creativity and flexibility when guidance changed. I know that was a headache. I, uh, it was coming down the pike to me and we were, we were fighting for you every step of the way. So I know that um, this has been a very difficult time for many businesses and um, I, I'm very um, uh, thankful for you. I applaud you for, for how you've met uh, the challenges that have come your way. Um, I know that you all showed up for your employees and for our residents. So I, I ask everyone to please continue to support your local businesses. I wanna thank all of our county residents for the personal sacrifices that they made to follow safety protocols and flatten the curve of this pandemic. You're the reason we're focused on a plan for recovery at this point. We're seeing great trends in the slowing of this virus and increasing vaccinations in our population. I applaud you for your commitment. I do um, have to address um, the darkest days of this pandemic. Um, 
My heart aches for all of our loved ones who passed over the course of this year. We lost many neighbors, friends, and family from COVID and COVID-related deaths. And we also saw losses from opioid-related deaths here in our community. Many of our seniors couldn't be connected with loved ones. Many hospital, hospital patients were alone during their stay. And the isolation of having to shelter in place with the lack of mental health support proved detrimental as well. These are the true challenges of a pandemic. I'm encouraged by the healing of, that our community has seen. Our nursing homes are opening up. Our children's schools are looking at plans to loosen restrictions and our lives are beginning to show signs of fulfillment again as we plan to open up our communities. The response, however, is still continuing. It's imperative people continue to do their preventive measures to, con to reduce contracting and spreading the virus. Please continue to wear your face covers even if you've been vaccinated. Keep physically distanced, wash hands and stay home if you don't feel well. And please don't wait and vaccinate as soon as you're eligible. I wanna thank you again for your time. I am so honored to have been able to present uh, for the second time the state of the county to you again this year. And I would plead for you all to be safe and healthy and enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you, Tracy, for having me on today and helping me through the initial technical issues in the beginning here. <laughs> I wasn't much help, Aileen, but I'm glad to try. <laughs> So thank you so much for, for your presentation and um, for getting us up to date on so many of these important issues. Um, there are a couple of questions. Again, anyone um, who has a question, please feel free to drop it into the chat. That'll come to me and I can relay it. Um, one question is just, could you give an update on the Office of the Aging and how they've weathered through these, these hard times? Oh, thank you. Um, so we have had tremendous staff. Of course, senior nutrition is something that is so vital to our community. Um, so we've been able to, to be able to, to flex with um, what's come our way uh, in full PPE, delivering meals. Um, also, our Office of the Aging has done a tremendous job, and I'm so sorry I didn't include this, um, with, uh, vac with providing vaccinations for our um, elderly population th throughout the community. Um, hundreds of people have been vaccinated because uh, folks have contacted the Office for the Aging to get help in, in getting an appointment for a vaccine. So Brenda Wyman and her staff here um, at the County Office of the Aging have done a tremendous job um, to this point. Great, thank you. And I'm sorry, could you um, just remind me if someone it wants to reach out to the their towns about vaccination, is it the clerks that they reach out to? It is, yes. Okay. So all of the, many of the town clerks, there are some towns that are not participating uh, for whatever reasons. Uh, it was not mandatory. Some people, some towns just don't have the staff um, and that is okay. Um, but yes, reach out to your town clerk or the city and you can uh, sign up for an appointment that way. And I don't have, you know, we're gonna be working on now that we have more vaccine coming, um, you know, I'm sure there will be more directions on how to um, access an appointment. Thank you. And it's really exciting to see these uh, local, this is me personally talking, the local waterfront revitalization um, projects and with the Sterling one, that's really cool that it's overlapping with this NOAA initiative for the um, marine sanctuary, the proposed marine sanctuary on Lake Ontario. So, so those things overlapping together are going to be really cool, potentially. Very excited about this development. Um, it's, it's been, a, it's been a long time coming, especially up at the Sterling Nature Center. Um, so I, I know the, the folks up there, the friends of the Sterling Nature Center are beyond excited and I am very excited here as well. Great. Um, we have not had any other questions come in. So thank you to Chair McNabb Coleman. Thank you for your presentation again. And once again, thank you to our sponsors, Tompkins Trust Company, 2 Plus 4 Management, and our Diamond Member Alliance National Bank. Thank you to our board and staff. I see many of you here. Um, and just a reminder to everybody on the call, please do keep an eye on our upcoming events on the Chamber's website. Um, we do have a Q&A with Dan Kalinske from New York State Econ Empire State Development on the ever-changing guidelines for gatherings and events. Um, that will be next Tuesday at 3 p.m. You can register 
for that through the website. We also have a information session coming up about the proposed marine sanctuary in Lake Ontario on April 12th, and as well as some great educational opportunities um, for our nonprofits and business communities. So just keep an eye on that page um, to, to stay engaged and, and take advantage of what's on offer. Um, but again, thank you, Aileen. Thank you, everybody, for being here and have a great day.